Welcome back to DigiBros. Still trying to find the Triforce shards. On that grind. On that grind. You know, <laughs> every time I look at my question list, I oh. fucking laugh. Because uh, you probably don't remember, and no one probably understood what the fuck we were talking about. But when we did the first set of questions, I made us start off with someone asking, like, uh, who are you and, and what uh, what's your opinion on life? And I said... Uh, my name is Jamie Molina, and I'm making the green. I'm taking oh, yeah. it. And you said, my name is Michael Render, and we are the new Avengers. Because you forced me to. Victor could not remember what the line was, and I made him repeat it like a hundred times, and he was like, I'm going to need a cue. Uh, so it says, real huge at the top of the page, Michael Render Avengers. Like, in all caps, giant text at the top of the page. And every fucking time I see it, I laugh. Um, okay. It's a reference to Run the Jewels lyrics. Run the Jewels fast. Run them, run them Jewels fast. I yes. watched uh, Killer Mike, his six-part interview with Bernie Sanders. It's pretty good. I'll have to check it it's out It's very sometime. interesting because it's the perspective of a black man, and that is very refreshing on some of the things he talks about. <laughs> good. Um, more questions for your list from Ashutan on the computer. Uh, at one po- at what point did the two of you discover 3D porn and hentai? How did you go about them? Oh, God. <laughs> when did you discover the porn and the hentai? The porn and the hentai. The ripping and the tearing. <laughs> the wild The women. ripping and the tearing. Uh, are you gonna answer the question? Uh, I guess I could, I, I have a fun story about, a uh, hentai. Alright. So, um, this is way back, I must have been, like, 14, but I, growing up, never had a computer, and, uh, the one computer I did end up getting was a Mac, uh, a Mac desktop that, uh, Conrad ended up basically stealing. Yeah. But Conrad used to use, like, my mom's old computer. Somehow, like, I ended up with my mom's old computer in my room that had been, like, tormented by viruses and shit. And I had discovered at some point, in the depth, the deep, dark depths of these files, that there was one hentai picture of Asuka on it, where it's like, her shirt's open and you can see her panties, and that was the first <laughs> hentai I had ever seen. Sounds and I would, about right. I would find that fucking picture late at night, <laughs> and that was, like, my first porn. <laughs> And it was that one, and it was like the shittiest, small, low res picture <laughs> that like you had to zoom in on real close to tell what the fuck it was. Oh my it god! It was awful. Like it was real bad. Oh man! <laughs> and I that's all. That computer didn't even have internet. It it had nothing. It was just on the floor in my room, and all I had on that computer was the one picture of Asuka. That's all I fucking use that computer that for. That is the best thing I've ever heard. In my it life. was pretty stupid. And the best part is, I know it's my fault. I had to be the one who saved. I that. wasn't sure if it was you or Boyd. But no, it was me. Yeah, I'm sure it was you. But that it was that was it. That was the only picture on the computer. I, w- I like wish that. you could like if I I wish I could see the. picture. It was in the deep dark sure, depth. It's burnt. I remember that. I will always remember. I'm what that sure picture it's one like. I'll remember if I see it. <laughs> Cause yeah, like um, that's funny. Cause that that's the moment I realized that you must look at porn and stuff. Because I was like, if this is here, that means Connor's been looking at porn all along. And so right. like I always knew, you know, what you were up to. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, like so for for three D porn, we both first discovered because my dad Shit. had a bunch of porn oh, magazines. Oh, yeah. I think we told that story. Yeah, before, I think we told that story. Uh, that we found them under the bed and we would look at them, but like we didn't like, fully comprehend it, really. We were pretty yeah. young when we when we were doing that. Those, when, those are awful. By the I, time... I some awful stories with that. By the time... Oh, you would void. By the time, like, we were actually old enough to be, like, like, sexually, like, you know, like, like actually jacking off and stuff like uh, that, then we weren't even looking uh, at that stuff anymore. Um, but, like, when, uh... When I was a teenager, you know, is when I got big into anime, and, like, I started to be attracted to Shit. anime girls. Like, I don't even think I was at first, Fuck. but, like, I started to be. Uh-huh. But, like, I was so, like, we were pretty prudish as kids, and we wouldn't look at anything, yeah. like, naughty. And, like, Boyd would always want to buy, like, you know, DVDs that were, like, violent and sexual and stuff, and I'd always be like, anything that said it had sexual content, I was always like, no, don't get that, because... Because I watched whatever he had, you know, yeah. so, like, I didn't want, I, 
out of my interest, I didn't want him to go buying stuff that I wouldn't want to watch, you know. Uh, so I was pretty prudish about watching, like, anime porn. But then, like, once I, be- like, was on the internet all the time, and uh, it was when we lived it, it, up in Chesterfield. I know that was the house <laughs> where I first discovered, like, online porn. Because, like, it was where I first found out about, like, Google like, that it was, like, a thing. Uh-huh. And uh, I would Google image search just, like, anime porn or something, <laughs> or, or, like, hentai. Uh-huh. And there wasn't a lot at the time. Like, back then, you could, like, it wasn't like you were looking at a million websites worth of hentai. It was, like, the 20 or so pictures that came up, and that was what you had. And most of it was Ava girls. Uh-huh. And, like... So that's how I know it had to be me, because it was of always, course. uh, like, <laughs> Ava girls. Ava picture. Yeah, and I hadn't even, <laughs> I had not even seen Ava and Gelly, like, I'd only seen the first eight episodes, like, uh, that yeah. Boyd had had on DVD, and, like, I barely remembered them, so, like, I, I only had the vaguest sense of, like, even who these characters were, it was just, like, that was the porn that I found, you know, um, and then I started writing, uh, Tales of Symphonia porn fan fictions. Wow. You haven't, you've heard about this. I never this. knew, no. No, you've heard about this. I don't think I've ever heard about you, your You your may have forgotten. I've told Tales everyone about porn. this, Victor. This Dude, is I something swear to God, I've heard about years. this. That's fucking hilarious. So, because when 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 I was like 14, I was really into Tales of Symphonia, and I hung out on, uh, on the game FAQs forums, and then I, like someone had, someone had like posted their fanfic of Tales of Symphonia and like I found out about fanfiction.net or no I I knew about it before because I'd written Zelda fanfics before I, I wrote I wrote my fair share of incredibly short and very stupid fanfictions when I was a kid um but like with Tales of Symphonia I started writing a porn fanfic and like people were encouraging it like people liked it it had like by the end, it had 8,000 views, and that was insane. Like, I didn't top that until, like, well into my blogging career. Yeah. Like, 8,000 views w- remained the most bragging rights I had on something <laughs> I did forever. For Tales of Symphonia for porn, porn, I wrote when I was 14. At an awesome. age when I didn't actually totally understand female anatomy. <laughs> so, like, like, when I would describe stuff, it was kind of vague. <laughs> About, nice. like, where the vagina is and stuff. Um, <laughs> he rubbed the back and they of were her all knee. Really stimulating her all vagina. All of them were weird as fuck. Because, like, I, I felt like each chapter should have, like, its own unique style of, of story. Do you uh, want me to, to describe each of them oh for God. you? You don't have to, but, I mean. Because they're, they're going to be hilarious. <laughs> you go ahead. Go, right. You know, dabble. Dabble a bit in all this. Right. So the first one is the one that made the most sense. Because <laughs> there's a scene in the game. There's there's basically, like, a big fan service oh, scene Lord. in Tales of Symphonia where everybody goes to the hot spring. And, yeah. you know, they joke about how... Okay, I think you have told me board. about this. Yeah, I, I know I, I have. I, was, I think we were with the Horseshoe Crew. It might have been at BronyCon or something. Probably. I mean, I've told everyone this story, so... Uh, anyway, so the first one I did was just all four of the girls <laughs> fucking. It was uh, <laughs> Colette, R- Rain, um, Sheena, and... Fuck is the there was a fourth Priscilla girl. the the uh, pink haired lolly girl I don't remember course. her name um so it was something to that effect but there was uh there's four girls and it was just all of them fucking in the uh, in the in the hot tub place or the the hot spring you know because they just kind of realized they all wanted to fuck and they did all of these are like a page long like all the fanfics I did would have like one page chapters and to me that was like that was sufficient you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never been one to, like, go into detail when I write. It's just, like, th- things happen. Um, so that was the first chapter. The second chapter is, like, Zelos and Colette, like, wake up at night and they realize they want to fuck. <laughs> and then, like, Col- I think, uh, hmm, I think... I think we want to fuck Zelos- now. <laughs> Zelos gets in a pool. I have realized I would like to he's fuck. He's floating on the pool using his angel wings. Uh-huh. And Colette's riding him while he's floating <laughs> on the pool. <laughs> That's pretty bad. I told you, right? these get crazy. <laughs> like, I got really creative with it. And then the third one is Priscilla just fucks Sheena in her sleep. Using oh a sword, what? like she puts the hilt in her end and the sheath in the other girl, and oh then just God. like fucks her while she's asleep. 
Um, okay. You know, the concept of rape, I did not understand back then. Like, I'd yeah. never heard of rape before. So Fair I didn't enough. even think of this as rape at all. It just seemed normal to me, I guess. I uh, never, literally never heard of rape, I don't think. Um, or or didn't appreciate that that would be considered it. Uh God, I'm trying to remember, because there was eight chapters of this. Some of them were just, like, more romantic. Like, there was one where it was just uh, Rain and... Uh, what's his fucking name? The dude... Oh, you're... Not Orin. The prison guy? Ten. No, the... Oh, man, I forgot about the prison guy. That's my favorite character. Uh, it was Rain and your dad. Who's is the dad? Oh, uh, Kratos. Was it? Oh, yeah, Kratos. Yeah, Rain and Kratos, because there's a lot of, like, shipping in the game for them. So, uh, so it was one that was just, like, them romantically. But then I remember the last chapter I was Boring. working on that I don't think ever got posted. That was, like, the magnum opus, because it was, like, two magnum pages dang. long. But it was, like, Rain was giving everyone in the class, like, a, uh... Blowjob? No, a seminar on, like, sex, like a sex ed seminar, uh-huh. and then, like... To demonstrate, she starts like fucking Lloyd, and then that it leads to everyone up fucking. Shit right yeah, there. <laughs> so you've read enough of them to know. Because <laughs> when I started reading Dogens, I was like, "Oh my god, this is exactly <laughs> the shit I used to write when I was a kid." Oh my god. Like th- I've seen that exact <laughs> scenario, and I'd never read any before. Like I had never read any porn. I had no I I'd never seen any porn. I'd never read any porn other than just pictures on Google Images. But, like, it was just obvious to be like, yeah, Rain gives sex ed by fucking them, and then they all start fucking. And it's just, like, a huge (laughs) orgy of all the characters. Oh, my Uh, God. And, like, yeah. And, like, the dialogue is exactly the kind of shit that they have in Dojins, too. Like, just corny one-liners Dojins are all written by (laughs) 13-year-olds. I would believe that. So, yeah, that's the one I remember the most strongly, because, like... (laughs) The reason I never finished it is that I would always just start fapping to my own stories before finishing (laughs) them and never get around to writing them. Um, Uh. And the funny thing is that, like, over time, I have come up with, like, hundreds of great, like, little porn stories exactly like those that I've never written. No, because I can't write worth a shit. Like, I can't... Like, if you actually read the stories, like, the ideas are funny and interesting and they would make good doujins but the the writing is god awful because again i can't describe anything so it would just be like and then he fucked her you know like i didn't say <laughs> fuck in the stories but like and i i also did that thing where like i used like lots of other words other than the main words because i wanted to be like coy about he it use his ding dong no, it'd be like, you know, his shaft his or something Twinkie. like that. Uh, <laughs> his wiener schnitzel. But yeah, like, I come up with, like, great, like, porn scenarios all the time. I just can't uh, write them, so they're not any good. Like, I mean, for characters, like, fanfic scenarios. Yes. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's sort of how I discovered 3D porn and hentai. And then once I, like, once the... I learned more about the internet and like I was actually able to find like porn then I was exclusively into Yuri for like a long time. Like I did not want to look at dicks and I was repulsed by like just dicks in general. <laughs> and so I was I was just like only Fair looking enough. at Yuri for a long time. Um where the fuck am I going? And then my tastes my continually phone. expanded just as they do with everything else. I got into every genre and now oh, I something just... continually expanded. <laughs> Damn! Shit! Shit! Uh, alright. Okay. Favorite H tags, Victor. I already know Digi likes lollies. Uh, Lollies are not the only thing I like, okay? I wouldn't even say they're my favorite H tag. I, uh, I actually, I actually prefer for girls to have boobs. (laughs) Yeah. I am not really that sexually into lollies to nearly the same extent that I just like like them for aesthetic reasons. Like you just when it think comes, they're to, cool. Yeah, I just I I like lollies as characters more so than like as sex objects. But which like, which is good. I I like. I mean, I do like women with small boobs, and I also like women who are tiny. I just don't necessarily like them to actually be, like, little girls, you know, even if it's, like, anime. I'm, my favorite thing is, uh, paleo lolly, the term I, that, uh, someone invented for me, but for girls that look young but are actually, like, 500 years old, 
That's my favorite. Like, uh, what's her name from Bakke Monogatari? Uh, the vampire. Oshino Shinobu. Mm. Um, although she's, like, totally lolly. But, like, there's ones who aren't quite so much. The girl from... Like, if you want to see my perfect woman, it's the girl from Dana Ganani. Uh, I can't understand what my husband is saying. She is absolutely perfect in every way. She's tiny. She's got nice boobs. She's blonde. Uh, she smokes. She drinks. She's got a kind of husky voice. Um, she's very he nonchalant. Kind of likes burly men, husky, husky dudes. I just like husky voices <laughs> on women. It's hot. Hey, there we go. Uh, I mean, when I play all those, like people probably know that I, I, I like usually design my characters in games to be lollies, uh-huh. but I always give them deep ass voices. <laughs> like, it, <laughs> lollies with deep. Voices. It always pissed me off in Terra because, uh. The idea of the Ellen is that they they don't age. They they always look the same. So you could your character would be any age that you could imagine, and like everyone would always play them with like the little girl voice, like ha, ha. Yeah. and I'm like, ah, like lame. The the point of playing an Ellen is that I'm actually like forty, you know. So I would <laughs> give her a voice that would be like a forty year old woman's voice, and uh, that's what made it cool to me. Um, anyways. You never answered the question, Victor. What are your favorite H tags? No, I like. Are there any tags like you search? Lesbian is shit. It, is it like vanilla? everyone else in the world? I feel like vanilla is your tag. <laughs> Vanilla's my tag. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't think Victor's into anything that would make a normal person go <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. You know, reasonable shit. Yeah, reasonable. There you go. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there was a long period of time. Where we were giving you shit that you were into maids. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Well, because <laughs> there was one point where, like, there was this girl who Victor liked in high school. And, uh, like, you had a picture of her in, like, a maid outfit that she had, like, cosplayed or whatever. Uh, and, like, I think I had just said something like, oh, you into maids? I don't know if it was about that picture or not. But you were like, yeah, I like maids. And then, like, I <laughs> it just, just... became a permanent tease well, me about maids. Well, because, like, I never heard you show any interest in anything before of that nature. <laughs> so as soon as I had something to latch on to, it was like, Victor's into maids. And, like, I would just constantly, like, show him, like, maid pictures. He's like, I'm not that into maids. And I'm like, it was it was funny to me, though. So I had to of keep course. doing it. But uh, he's not really that into maids. I am not really into maids. I'm either. really not into maids at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I like a, 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 a. If you have a particularly cute maid outfit, it can be really cute. Like the ones from K on are really cute, but I don't know. I did. I have an amazing thing. poster oh of the K on girls in maid be... outfits that is like. Yeah, it's great. That's a nice poster. It's around it's here not somewhere. Up, uh, I took it down for. When what we the were fuck? Yay! Yeah, yeah, I got a Triforce shard! Three more! Oh my god, we actually got one. Holy shit. Digi and Vic, can you both recount your most productive lazy day ever? Example, where you got the most fun out of doing jack shit. Uh, any day where I hang out with Hope and we do nothing, and <laughs> we watch you hack a show. Oh man. It's usually my goal in life. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't count like a convention as doing jack shit. Probably like... Yeah. Anytime I hang out with my friends to just drink all day. Like, uh, when Cider and Jeff were yeah. here, like, we spent three days non-stop drinking. Did not do anything else. <laughs> like, that was literally, like, we woke up, we started Why drinking, we and we kept else? drinking until we passed out. Nice. Um, alright. Digi and Vic, have you ever thought of being a superhero for the people of Virginia Beach and beyond? Yes. What would your superhero names, outfits, and gimmicks be? No powers, just whatever is possible within reality. I've always been obsessed with writing that script. <laughs> Name, outfit, and gimmick if you were a superhero protecting Virginia Beach. Oh, man. So we already, like, here's what the thing. What would I be, we, is the question. We created villains for Virginia Beach. Well, I mean, I had the local superheroes measurement man. Right. Well, like, we, we've, done, we've, we've played around with this concept a lot as, like, something to... Like, to make a story out of, and, like, Measurement Man, the local hero, and, uh, there was, what's his name, Throb- Throbin Hood? Yes, Throbin Hood, the, the Throbbing, Throbbing Heart, Heart of Justice. Justice. Which was a failed second video in that series <laughs> that, uh, had a great script, but we yeah. failed the filming and just threw it away. Uh, but yeah, like, we've kind of been obsessed with the idea of making local superheroes, but we made 
villains once that wasn't really for a story or anything. It was just like who we would be as villains, and that was yes. where you came up with uh, Sir Kills a lot. Yeah, who is like a a character that appears throughout a bunch of your stories, and mine was uh, Dick Shit Island. Dick Shit Island. Which is where I wore like... What else would Connor be? I wore like three layers of pants and three <laughs> layers of shirts that were all different kinds of played and like had a, a Mountain Dew and just like... I just looked like a scummy, sleazy dude and like a garish yes. tie. It was just like how much garish clothes can I wear at once was sort of the gimmick of Dick Shit Island. Um, it was very stupid. It was great. I loved it. Wonderful. And Marcus had Mayor Huggums. I think he was... I can't remember if he was supposed to be a villain or not. What would I be now, though? But what would mm. your hero be? I would be, uh... <laughs> the human scraper. Scraper? And so, I would actually go around with, with a scraper, and I would scrape all the gum off of all the shit in town. That would mm. be my thing. I'm just... I, I scrape up gum. That's been inconveniently placed on chairs and benches all over the town. I would be. That's how I would help Virginia Beach. It's a, that's a good cause. It's a good hero. Yeah, that's a good gimmick. What would your outfit be? Um, huh. Let's see. I have to do with something with scraping gum. Uh, I guess I'd wear a green morph suit, and I'd cover myself in uh spatulas. <laughs> all right. My 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 character is Fart Chugger the Last Baron. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and uh my 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 outfit is that I dress like a flasher with a very large purple hat. <laughs> and I stand at intersections and yell at people who are texting while driving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I yell, "Stop fucking texting while driving." And that's my... <laughs> that's, that's your that's your thing. That's my thing. That's your shtick. Uh, I can't remember what I said before, but I'm going to call him Dick Fart the Last Baron. Uh, Dick Fart the Last Baron. Fart Sugar. Baron. That's what I said the first time. <laughs> Dick Fart slash Fart Sugar. Fart Sugar can be his... He can be Fart Sugar and he can have Dick Fart as, a, as, as his damn. attack. His attack is the Dick Fart. Uh... All right. <laughs> Sir Victor Francis the Great and Digi the Stool Boy. What do you imagine your lives being like if you were both an only child? Same parents, upbringing, etc. Just you didn't have each other or shade. Can't even imagine. Just uh, not even possible. I feel like mom and dad would have had more time to concentrate on just me and figure out what the hell my deal is. Because, like, when I was a kid, they thought I was, like, a genius, but they also thought I might be autistic. And I think both were probably right. Or, or <laughs> like, I think I was probably pretty spurgy growing up. I don't know if that's something you can grow out of, but I f if it is, then I feel like I did. Mm -hmm. But, like, uh... I you think, beat the spurg. I think they would have had more time to try to wrap their head around what I was Shit. up to... And, uh, and like fret over just me, you know? Yeah. So I feel like for, for, for me, like maybe they wouldn't have had to work so much. Right. And like, by the, I feel like by the time I was in elementary school, like, like when I was really young, my parents cared a lot about like how in like how smart I was and like, they really worked closely with me. And then it just kind of became like, why aren't you doing your homework? Sit at the table yeah. and do your homework. And there wasn't a lot of like close learning together. I think I probably would have been a lot more of a schoolboy if my parents had like if I had been Perhaps. an only child. Like given the personality of my parents and they're like does like they they're very like success driven and like you know want to teach and, and 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 like and make you know like my mom's a straight A student herself, and I think I would have become a straight A student if you know I had been an only child. I might have been an athlete. Probably. I can imagine. I wouldn't have had your negative influence of sports, and Dad would have all he would have cared to teach me his sports. Right. And I would have been an athlete. So I guess I would have been. I mean, because like especially when we were young, I was extremely <laughs> influenced by my mom, and he was extremely influenced by our dad. So like. Yeah. I feel like those influences would have become more strong uh, had we been only child-ish, yeah, ch only children, yeah. uh, as opposed to constantly influenced by each other throughout our whole lives. Um, 
What's the worst shit or piss you've both ever had and the tragic backstory behind it? This is the second time that someone asked us eight questions and the last one is about shit. Yeah, I mean, shit's cool. What is the worst shit or piss you've both ever had at the tragic backstory behind it? I, I think I know mine. Do you know yours? I don't know. No. Worst shit ever? Can't think of it off the top uh, of my head. The worst shit I can remember is Otakon 20... 2009 or 10. Um, we were about oh, to no. get in the line. And before we left, because we, uh, we had brought food with us to eat at the hotel. And I had brought SpaghettiOs. But our hotel didn't have a microwave. Mm. So I just ate a can of cold SpaghettiOs. And then 30 minutes later, we're in line. And suddenly, I'm just like, I have to shit out everything. Like, my yes. whole body is rejecting everything oh, I, I inside of I thought of a couple of stories for And so done. I went into the, like, I just left the line, went into the con center, and just, like, probably spent, like, 40 minutes just straight shitting. And I think I might have thrown up. <laughs> I think I think I actually did like I think I I uh, shat and then puked and then shat again and that one of the shits I took three flushes to get down. It was like that kind of insanity. That's pretty brutal. What about you? So I'd say the worst piss I've ever taken. Oh god. Was when we were on our first bro hike. Oh, I think so. We we got all our dudes together and we went on a hike. And at that time I was on antidepressants. And the, the the pills I was taking at the time made it so I couldn't piss. Like, I would have to stand for, like, five to ten minutes and really focus on taking a piss if I wanted to pee. And so we are at the summit of this mountain, and, like, we're on our way down, and everyone's walking ahead, and I just have to go so bad. Because we got up in the morning, and it's been hours, and I just have to fucking go. And every time I just stand there, and I can't do it. And so, like, eventually, I had to just be like, everyone go ahead, I'm gonna stand here, I'm gonna try to pee as hard as I can, and I just sat there for, like, five minutes. There's, like, fucking horses over in the distance and shit, and I'm on top of a mountain freezing my ass off in a cold mist, trying to piss, and I was just like, this is so fucked. It was so you annoying just, and depressing. You just reminded me, I actually have a worse piss story. Uh-huh. Because, I, uh... Oh, like, see, there, there's something very tragic about when you, you feel like you've lost your basic bodily functions, and it's it's very sad and maddening, and that's, yeah. that's the I, antidepressant okay. experience. I've, I've gotten a, a, a lot better about this, but I, I've, I've always had, like, sort of, like, pissing anxiety where, like, I don't like to piss with other people, like, around and yes. in earshot or, like, standing next to me or something, <laughs> and, uh, and it was, it was, like, you know, worse back in time, but like when I was getting the job at Target, I had to take a piss test. And oh no, the way they do that is they they take you have to like go to a clinic, and a woman will fucking bring you back, and you have to take a piss with her standing right outside the door with the door cracked, uh -huh. and piss into a cup, and give it to her afterwards, right? And knowing she's there, right there, outside the I've door. I've done a few piss tests, but they never, like, stood outside the door. This is how door. mine went. And every... Okay, in this office that I went to do this, both the receptionist and the nurse were these ladies who just seemed completely pissed off. Like, mm. they were having the worst day ever for 10 years. Like, that's how yeah. they... They both had, like, mean faces. They were curt. They were short with people. They were just fucking... They were just mean, right? And so, like, no one wants to be here, right? I don't yeah. want to do this. And I'm pre-gaming myself by drinking, like, a shitload of water. Mm -hmm. So I drink, like, a, a whole bottle of water. And I'm waiting in this fucking waiting room for like 45 minutes and it gets to the point that I have to piss the most I've ever had to piss, but I don't want to go piss when I have to save it up for the test. Right. Yeah. So finally she calls me back the there? and I'm like, piss like I, I'm like shaking. I have to piss so bad. Right. Yes. And, uh, like, I think you are supposed to catch her in the act, but I'm, I'm not sure where she's going now. Um, yeah, I'm, like, shaking after the piss so bad. She takes me back, and I go in there, and I can't do it. 
I can't pee because she's standing right outside the door and it's like freaking me out and there's I'm trying to pee into a fucking little cup and I'm just like I don't know should I stand up should I sit down what should I do and I'm standing there for like five minutes like frozen like I can't do anything and she keeps like saying like if you don't do it now then it's gonna invalidate the test and stuff like that right because you know they think I'm trying to Jesus cheat or Christ. whatever and I'm like I'm, I'm trying I don't know what to tell you and then so finally she's like all right qu- stop like you can't like it's too it's too late and you're going to do it in a minute. Wow. Right? So she makes me go back out and sit down for another 15 minutes. Mind oh you, my God. I already was at like my bladder's going to explode point before I got in there. Yep. And now I have to go sit down and wait for her to let me do it again. And I was just like ready to cry. It hurts so much. And then she calls me back again. And I like even then I still like I was... I had to, like, sit down and, like, use all the force in my body to push out this piss. Uh Uh-huh. And, like, and, like, it never, you know how normally, like, when you're in, like, a public bathroom, then, like, at first it takes, like, it might take a few seconds, but then once it starts, it goes. It wasn't like that. It would not just go. I had to, like, push every ounce of this (laughs) enormous monster piss into this fucking cup. That was the worst. Gotcha, bitch. Uh, that's pretty bad piss. Yeah, so that's the end of this episode of Digi Bros, where we answer uh, all these uh, disturbing questions from Asha 10. Uh, but I kind of want to know what how the scene goes before I cut it off. So I feel like we made progress in this episode. <laughs> I'll ask one more from the from the from the page here. Uh, none of those ones. Um, hmm. Oh, I get this question a lot. Are you planning to expand your Monogatari analysis? Maybe. Uh, I have to watch the new episodes, and if I have... Are you still going with the same episode? Enough to talk, yeah. I can, tell, if, I can talk about shit. Uh, if you can do so, like, I want to... <laughs> I'm trying to keep this brief. I just want to see the rest of the scene. I'll say uh, the worst shit of my life is after I had my appendix removed, oh. and there were, like, four or five consecutive days where I could not take a shit, and they told me that... Like, they had put all this gas inside my stomach to, like, expand it so they could do the surgery. And they were like, the only way to get rid of it is you have, you have to pass it. You have to fart it out. And, like, <laughs> that was supposed to happen within 24 hours. It didn't happen for four or five days. And I was in excruciating pain all of those days. And I was taking all kinds of laxatives to try to get it to happen. <laughs> no. And so, like, I always felt like I had to take a shit and I could never do it for days and days. And then eventually it was just the most fucking painful horrifying shits of my life that that finally came out because my stomach was still fucked up and so it was just painful pushing anything nightmare just a nightmare of a week of fucking <laughs> post-surgery pain the post-surgery pain was much much worse than the surgery pain mm. all right how did that scenario play out pre, what did you get from all that surgery uh i think you got a bottle or something i don't know Next time on Digibro. Does time not pass on the island? Do I have to leave? No, the time island? does not pass on Fuck. the island. Fuck. <laughs> I'm sitting here waiting for the day to pass. I All can right. talk to that guy and get Next this time on, on Digibros.